Hello everyone, and welcome to some exhibition matches. We are... Okay, usually I call it Nine Lives of Dawn. Anyway, I'm your host, Dominic Rochette, if you're whichever you prefer. We just had the Lobster Roll Tournament, and now we are back with just regular exhibition matches. Because why not? So let's start up. First off, a request, 2v2. Don't remember... I think multiple people requested it, actually. 2v2 on Terra between Dave the Brave Anar and Anarchid. Fighting against Ezeride and Nikla. Not a player I've seen before, actually. Same with Dave the Brave. So, Ezeride and Anarchid, well known players. Dave the Brave and Nikola are completely new to me. No idea, I've never seen them before. But, presumably, they've played at least somewhat. So, an interesting approach, actually, kind of interesting because the last week of the Lobster World Tournament, which was two weeks ago, was a similar setup of high skill player along with newbie. Anyway, let's see. Where's the factory choices? I'm actually really surprised by North Side. Jump Spider on such a flat map seems like an odd choice to me. I mean, granted, you could always just go for the unit types, like set a bunch of puppies to throw around the map, set up firewalkers for sieging later on. Venoms are just good. Like they're pretty They're they're pretty overtuned right now, so I can totally see why doing them. This was this, even though this was a few versions ago, not a whole lot of changes have happened to Venoms in that time. On the other hand, Rover Cloakie is a totally normal thing on a flat map like this, so I expect Southside, they're, they're playing more to the meta. Whether that's better or not remains to be seen, but it's definitely more typical. Somebody said Southside is kind of... Well, not really taking full advantage that they actually have a lot of this. I mean, the one thing Northside does have is a lot of room to just mess around with the map. And as you can see here, throwing up a bunch of stuff all over. They can do that a bit more easily because it jumps in spiders. Not that this isn't both pathable, but it's a bit easier for jumps in spiders. And the vehicles, of course, can't do anything about it. That being said, it seems the main difference in strategy overall is South being, or Anarchid specifically, being considerably more aggressive than either of their counterparts over in the North. Particularly compared to Izzeride, who started out just going back, expanding backwards. Makes sense that there is the 2.4 expansion there, but that's not much bigger than most of them. Of course, yeah, the major 5.4s that are four nice little diamond shape around the map. But you do have Way less to work with overall, especially when you are being raided, as we see Nikola is now, their factory, under a heavy threat. No support for coming back to it. At the same time, Nikola's commander going up against Anarchids, losing their factory, needing to defend their commander. It is a strike commander, so at the very least it should be able to get enough weapons to stop any errant glaives from coming in to take it out. But the damage has been done. And Nikola wanting to resign. This is not... <laughs> Spoiler alert, the game is not going to end here. But... Yeah, this is a massive blow to Nikola. Certainly a massive blow to their ego. I mean, they lost their factory three minutes into the game. You don't easily recover from that. Now, that being said, the north side has like a 10 metal per second advantage. Sorry, they have the center expansion, not a 10 metal per second advantage, but if they can hold it, they will maintain a 10 metal per second advantage. And then the overdrive is also going to be absolutely bonkers once it gets sorted. Same time, Izzeride looking to find some damage to be done, but they themselves are also getting heavily attacked. And that is Dave the Braves Rovers. Say Dave the Braves Scorchers coming in here. Specifically the Scorchers. And the factory won't go down, though. It's going to be like 100 something HP. Most of that thanks to the Pyro that was defending it, but still, it's not going to die. Which actually does buy a lot of time. Nicola is setting up a factory alongside the other 5.4. Jump out factory does indeed survive at 70 HP. Which is still terrifying, considering the glaives coming in. Metal extractor doesn't quite go down, though. Not quite yet. Dave the Rave coming in, takes out the factory with three darts, who the factory then takes out in turn. Same time, though, Anarchid's not managing to keep their factory alive at all, and they've lost the 5.4. So North now does, in fact, have a 10 metal per second lead. But again, more importantly, it's going to be going forward, the overdrive, you can get off that. And the fact that 
you know, as long as he's a ride and Nicola can hold on to their territory, which, granted, it's going increasingly a tall order, but if they could hold on to it and expand backwards. But now, they don't really have control over this section of the map. Like, Nicola kind of has control over this section, Izzerad kind of has control over this section, but they don't have control over the back. Arguably, Anarchid's getting control, like, getting the influence over that and could easily take it. Not to mention, Izzerad being crushed between David the Brave and Anarchid. Nicola has a bit more room, but they're basically just up against the wall. Same time, though, Venom comes in here, tries to find some damage being done. It's not going to find much, I'm afraid. Only one Venom against six Glaives in the Lotus. It's a noble effort, but it's not going to be quite as valuable as I'm sure Nicola would have hoped. That being said, Dave the Brave's Scorchers are running out of steam. Switching out of Fencers, they have that set up. At the same time, though, they are up against... Well, against the glaives that are building up, and actually, there's not a whole lot more. So, so far, the north side has no factories. The only factory currently in play is Dave the Brave's rover assembly. That's it. Everyone else is focusing entirely on either rebuilding in the way that Nicola has, which still fill up a factory up, so... Now, there are two factories active. Or they have been building a bunch of economy, building a bunch of stack defenses, trying to win that way. He said Nicola's commander... Nice choice of weapon. Light particle beam with a slow, slow attachment. Yeah, disruptor ammo, that's what it is. Nice to know, a bit of a range too. Make sure they can't easily be taken out by riot units. So is Ride apparently managing to actually secure territory inside of this valley, despite being surrounded, or not surrounded, despite having Dave the Brace pressure on one side. Anarchid likely to provide pressure off the other. So far, though, Izzeride is doing okay. Ooh. Oh, that's got to be painful. That was... That was non Nikolai Zim. They, they aren't playing Cloaky. That was Anarchids. Got spotted. And North Side starting to turn things around. But Nikolai's commander, I mean, that's where most of the income's been going for them. And it's kind of paying off. I mean, considering the circumstances, it's a good choice to go for it. It's ba as a battle they can really do. Is right also managing to get their own construction up. So from there, actually, it might have been Israel's. Yeah, I'm not thinking about it. I didn't spot it before it went off, but either way, it didn't work for Anarchid. Now they have the Kalikibot factory just getting rebuilt, but they are also having to deal with the fact that another teammate's getting heavily attacked with enough. Just no, not even enough defenses. The Lotus goes down, leaving the glaive open. Felon's also up, but it's largely just providing covering fire for Nicholas Commander. One Mason down. That is, that is big, but not big enough. As the glaive does get killed off by a Claw, and that clears out the territory for now. He is right, pushing their commander and out wearing, or out reavering a reaver before moving back in here to try to get. Basically, round two going. Same time, Anarchid. I don't know if I agree with the switch over to Knights. I like the. I think the resource availability is fine for that. It's just. There's not a whole lot of defenses. If. And this is not. This is not a big if. Nicola finds these metal extractors in the back. Nothing's going to stop them. The Knights are way too slow. Instead, they're going over to try to take care of Nicola's Shieldbot Factory, which I totally get. That's not a bad choice. But still, Southside's entire economy is depending on the back side of the map being maintained by Dave the Brave. Which is looking increasingly challenging. To put it lightly, I mean, Nicola has found at least some of this stuff. Their own factory is in trouble, though. Like... Throne Factory is basically on the ver- it's dead. There is checkmated. There is nothing going to happen. It's gonna go down. Is ride should be able to take out David the Brave's Factory at the same time, and that'll at least provide an opening. I mean, David the Brave's Commander is coming in here, but they are not, not really in the same fighting position. Both Rukon comes. So Is ride's Commander has been more heavily damaged, but they also have, well, they also have a machine gun. That's the main thing. And Nicholas Command... Ooh, basically doing the opposite. It's 
but symmetric thing of what Anarchid's going for. Still, Anarchid has managed to take out the other 5.4, leaving that spread even again. As we have the longest ever base trade. He's right going on the back, taking out all of David the Brave's metal extractors. But of course, there's not a whole lot there that Israel has either that can't be taken out by Anarchid. So ultimately, no real gains. Over David the Brave's commander does go down. Israel's commander got close, but commander plus glaives does beat a lone commander. And that is, they believe, the first commander death of the game. Yep, that is indeed the first commander death of the game, and Anarchid also has not upgraded their commander. Not that they necessarily should, just having lost their factories second, it makes sense they weren't motivated to do so. Oh, uh, I... Oof. Yeah, knight's coming in here. No imps at the ready. Slings are not going to be able to find a whole lot of... Well, they're not going to be able to... not going to be targeting if they don't target. Need to do that first. Being said, though, the knight's heavily damaged coming in. Only two knights able to really bring the fight here. One of them will go down, getting rid of the stinger. The other one, basically on its own. Glaives are coming in for support, though. But it's not going to be enough. Not with the defender's advantage. It's down. The glaives are down. And a bunch of reclaim has just showed up very nicely inside of... Can we get... There we go. Yeah. That was Metal Reclaim. It just nicely showed up inside of that base. Inside of Israelite's new base. When the north side already has... Although, admittedly, the base trade is complete. So they're now technically the south side. But well, Israelite and Nikola have definitely won in terms of economy advantage. They haven't actually won the game yet. They're just gradually increasing their economy advantage. They've now, again, they just need to rebuild the caretakers and keep this alive long enough to grab the reclaim. And then they'll have all the reclaim. Because a bunch of knights just died. Same time, Nikola has again rebuilt it. Or, man, rebuild it. Ugh. I have not warmed up today, apparently. As again, rebuilt. I cannot English today, but I, they have rebuilt. And do a cloak about factory. So you guys become increasingly... Well, I guess... Okay, shield and cloak is equally normal. But it's become increasingly normal as the factors have been destroyed. Like, spider jump didn't work? Okay, we'll try shields. No, shields didn't work. Okay, try cloaky. Try double cloaky. Let's go for that, I guess. Although, wizard ride is not looking too hot here. Yeah, unlike last time, the reaver coming in here did basically wipe out his ride's force. Dave the Brave. Why are they losing confidence here? They're voting to reside. Anarchid has most of the north side of the map. I mean, they're not that far behind economically. They're not being hit that hard by Israelite Nikola. I thought that was Nikola that was resigning at that point. Or maybe Israelite. I mean, yes, Dave the Brave did lose their rover factory and lost a lot of their positioning. But they are... Oh, yeah, I see. They don't have... They don't have any constructor units. That would make sense. It's like, and they don't have a commander, and they don't have a factory, and they have no constructor units, and all they have to their name is a, three defense towers and two metal extractors. Okay, I can see why they'd be a little bit hopeless. But, uh, still a team game. Anarchid's still definitely in this. And Nikola's also been backed into a corner. Going heavy on the imps themselves, but they don't have much of an army to use with it. Anarchid, on the other hand, they have two factories, they have plenty of income. They have the entire north side of the map. They won't quite be able to secure the rest of the north side of the map, thanks to that one Lotus, but still, they are they are in charge. They have they have the right position, they have the best units, they have the most units, in fact. Sorry, maybe not the most units, just just the higher tier ones. They will soon have the most units once the Reavers find their clor their quarry. Because, yeah, Glaives don't really do well against them. But, of course, Nikola has prepared themselves. They have... They have imps. 
So maybe my previous comments regarding unit quality are a little bit premature, though admittedly imps are... They are going to work reasonably okay in this scenario, but they've... I mean, positioned right. I mean, the knights won't be able to take... won't be taken out by a single imp. The reavers will. Which means the glaives can come in, but the glaives are out of position for this moment. And that is... That is exactly what I was talking about. Although, the second one might go off? Yes, it does! So, one knight at least is going... Well, both knights are going to be taken out. The Reavers, however, are the bigger threat. And for those of you asking in chat, this is the Shadow Fury 3 or Dominant Cast, whichever I prefer. I mean, whichever you prefer. I don't know of any others. That'd be a weirdly specific kind of thing to impersonate. But maybe I have impersonators for all I know. Anyhow, back to the match proper. Back to Nicola getting some raiding in. Back to Nicola's raiding being actually remarkably effective. The micro is pretty good. Not quite good enough. I mean, Dave the Raider was able to take that out completely, but still, lost a metal extractor. Same time, though, Anarchid with more raiding, getting rid of his rides. Pretty much entire energy economy. Well, okay, energy economy on that hill. He's right, has... They have energy economy outside of the hills. They have energy economy on... This hill over here. So they're fine. But that one main hill they were trying to... They were holding before... That's gone. Actually, another one also going down that... Man, Dave the Brave doing work with that one glaive. Doing major work with that one glaive. Okay, maybe not quite that one glaive. Maybe get a little overexcited. Him coming here from Manor Kid. Takes out a glaive. Unfortunately, not enough to turn the tables. So that is. That is a backside harassment that's going to be quite successful. At least up until it gets to these lotuses. But still, that's another two or three metal extractors to go down. That being said, this entire time, Israel and Nikola have had an economic advantage. And we're seeing that pay off. The Reavers haven't been spotted, prompting Ronan to be built, and as a result, can't really assault this force from Izzeride. Same time, we have a nice little... Okay, this Scythe is probably not going to be able to do much against Anarchid's commander. But still really good for scouting, knowing what's up on that hill. Izzeride... Playing it smart, not getting too close here. I mean, letting Anarchy keep three metal extractors, taking or demolishing the rest of them. So it still works out. At the same time, we have Southside's gunships finally coming online. A couple of locusts for now, though, and having been spotted, are we going to see any response to that or no? I mean, to some degree, there's. There is a. There was a possibility that this is what Izzeride is going for. They went, oh, well, they got two Locusts. I can take them out with the Reavers. No big deal. Because they can, in fact, take them out with Reavers. That is no big deal. That's always one of the things you got to bear in mind when you're facing a, an opponent that's throwing in air units is how much Flex AA can you get away with? Because if you can get away with Flex AA, then dedicated anti-air is just going to be putting a lot of metal in where it's not going to be helpful. Still, though, raids continue. Izzeride realizing with that raid that they could advance their forces. Nothing in the center of the map. Well, that and also radar coverage. But, yeah, they have... They know enough to know that, yeah, there's no reason not to advance. Their opponent is winning the back line. Still, though, Anarchid covering both flanks of that valley. So, Izzeride forced back again into their defensive position. Protecting that super max. Speaking of, the one Supermax over here... Ah, not enough overdrive. Not quite enough energy to make it go overdrive. Still, two Supermaxes apiece. Not quite the main drivers of the economy. Northside does have... Well, Izzeride and Nikola. That is the north side, or was. They do have quite the advantage, which could be destroyed. Izzeride setting up glaives to defend this. 
Might lose one Metallic Tractor, not going to let them lose any more. I noticed comments from the people who were spectating the match during the match that they were thinking, oh, well, Nicholas Glaives aren't going to be enough to defend against Glaives coming from the north. But no, it was just there to buy time for Israel to build some in response. That was a well-coordinated defense. I like it. Very well-coordinated. Same time, Izzeride working with that one felon Nicola managed to build from their one shield blood factory. Very least, does help out Garrison Glaives. Would be useful flex AA, but it might not really matter at this point. I wouldn't really say a couple gremlins would be a bad idea. These locusts could cause problems, and soon will, too, actually, with all the backline mechs here. I was like, North's economic advantage, it could fall pretty quickly. And it's, well, exactly what Anarchid is trying to make happen. Razor's on the way, though. Nothing. Oh, really? The Scythe can hit them? Really? The Scythe can hit them? Oof. On oh, at the same time. Ooh, Geo. Ooh, okay, Nicola taking some damage, but may not be so bad. Again, Scythe can apparently hit Locusts. They fly... I didn't realize they flew that low to the ground. Apparently they do. Today we learn. At any rate, we have... Ah, the gnats coming in. There we go. We have the gnats to come along with the locusts. The locusts, having just about completed getting rid of all the backline metal extractors, are going to have to start assaulting armies... Possibly assaulting large strategic targets, and that's when you really want to have the Nats to help out. Being said, Niccolo looking to try to put a stop to it when they get the chance. They've really upgraded their commander. Same time though, Israel with the disarm shots coming in follow up with their forces. That's a dead fa that's a dead stinger, probably a dead factory. Kinda comes down to how well the units can defend. Particularly Dave's units. Aw, oh, Nicholas Commander gets taken out by Nats. There's potentially still time for defense. Anarchid's Commander is going to get sniped, but it's... Oh, that is... That is cutting it close. Anarchid's Commander goes down. Nicholas Commander is still under heavy threat, though. But it's going to take a lot longer to kill it. Should mind have time for the Knight to get in. Probably take out the Locust. And then though, Thun the Thunderbird is coming back around. Main army for Dave has been double disarmed. A bit of a waste there, I'm afraid, but still. Disarm. Knight comes in and is also stunned. Oof. I'm pretty sure Nicholas Commander is dead. Northside's still in a strong position in terms of their overall army, but yeah, that's not looking great, I'm afraid. I mean... Yeah. No, they're, they're doing well. Isra doing far better. Nicola is kind of... Oh, right, he doesn't have this yet. Nicola's kind of in trouble. Nicola's kind of a lot in trouble, having just lost their commander, which is the primary expenditure for them. I mean, Isra should be able to cover. And Nicola did a lot of work with that commander. So it wasn't a waste. I mean, yes, it it blew up, but Anarchist Commander was taken out in the process. Well, not as much of an expense, but also throughout the entire game, that commander has been doing a lot of work. So Izzeride, they need to clean up here. Should be able to see some help coming in, though. We have, we had Tremor being built. But I'm not really sure what's happened with that. I had not really noticed any Tremor dying, but it may have just been cancelled. Either way, Izzeride able to finally clear out Dave the Brave's forces on that hill nearest their base, and... Ooh, still gotta deal with all these forces, but again, Thunderbirds are at large. One of them is just rearming. It is rearmed, it is ready! It is maybe a little bit late. <laughs> Better come in, like, right now, because this entire force, they are being scary. Thunderbird comes in, though, takes out a bunch of them, gets taken out itself, but at least 
massively thins out the threat this army poses. Along for some counterattack. He's already able to hold the center for now. And the reclaim has been secured from the looks of it. Anarchist still... No, actually, Anarchist still got a lot of control. They have the factory right there. That's the biggest thing. Like, there are many units nearby that are causing problems as far as keeping that reclaim secured. At the same time, though, there's just such a big threat coming in here from Izzeride and from Nikola that it shouldn't be a problem, so long as the constructing you can actually get in there. Which is looking hard! That's actually not looking like a very probable thing to have happen. And there- okay, there's our Tremor. There was our Tremor. Goodbye, Tremor. Didn't get to do anything. Well, so much- I mean, beyond we hardly knew ye, we never knew ye! He did nothing, unfortunately. Still, though, that baited out the Thunderbird, or they baited out the Thunderbird shop, but they baited out the army to get Thunderbirded. So thinning it out even further. Still, though, the north side is losing their army advantage. South side getting farther and farther on attrition. Not a whole lot of defense forces here. Enough, though. Maybe stops Anarchist's assault, but it's not enough to keep the reclaimed field safe. Ultimately, though Izzeride and Nikola do have the advantage economically and have for most of this match, they are still struggling to actually get that push in, get the really juicy pieces. Same time, though, I'm surprised Anarchator and Dave aren't sending out constructors along with their army to reclaim. Same with Izzeride, actually. I mean, Izzeride has the one. But I don't see a whole lot else. Maybe this can- oh, no, it's getting radars. Not making reclaim. Which is rather surprising, considering the advantage Day of the Raven Anarch could have right now. Like, this very local advantage for them. Thunderbird again coming in should be able to shut down quite a bit. Sort of the felons, but unfortunately the follow-up forces were on retreat. Not really in the best position to dig this out, but they might go for it, and indeed they are. I don't see them getting any kills, though. They get the felons, that'll be that'll be great! Oh, fell one felon down, second felon able to get his shield back up and does not go down. A lot of work for a single felon. But at the same time, a bit of a distraction, allowing for Nicola to get their tanks over to the reclaim field and start taking it. Easy ride with their conjure able to take it back, and this entire force should be able to take out the gunship plant before it continues to build more. Splitting Anarchist's attention, giving Easy Ride a lot more room to breathe. Good job relieving the pressure on the front line. And that will nicely open things up. So now the south, well, the north side, now on the south side of the map, actually has the entire south side to play with. And for the first time in this game, they have an entire side to work with. First, that being said, Israel's actually retreating away with most of their forces. Possibly trying to lure Southside into a pincer. I I could see that happening. Of course, one thing is that there is a frighteningly large force coming in here from Anakin and Dave the Brave. So yes, a flank would be would be kind of tricksy, and would be kind of cool, but it would also be kind of hard to execute considering the fact that it's not it's not like there's a whole lot of forces actually flanking. On the other hand, Day of the Brave is, well, more, I think more for real. Like, they are, you know, a dozen or so glaze coming around the side, taking out all these metal extractors, or very likely taking them out because there's no ground defenses. Not really the best option. Same time, the best option being, though, Thunderbird coming in here, pushing back the forces, while allowing for another push coming in here from Nikola. He's right also going in, but mainly this is a distraction from Nikola. How much radar are these players have? No, they have enough. They can definitely see the forces coming around the side. That's not the problem. The problem is just that they just haven't addressed them. Same time, the Glaze coming in here, and... Oh, two of the Conjurers should be able to survive. One of them is going to go down. Wait, what? No! What? Okay, I don't think that's going to come up in time. One Lotus will not stop ten Glaze. Unfortunately, that is a lot of damage being dealt. Same time, though... There's that force from Nikola coming on the side, but these glaives 
These glaives are getting working. I mean, the south side does... Sorry. North side does have an energy advantage, but not so much that they can really afford to lose all of these wind generators. Going for the caretaker. Strong choice there. Same time, though, they're losing their backside, and that's a much stronger assault. These glaives aren't going to last very long. Like, if they hit any resistance, Dave the Brave's glaives are going to die. Whereas Nicholas' tanks are pretty well self-sufficient. Like, none less going to be able to quickly go back to stop them without siphoning forces off the front line. And if that happens, then Ezra is able to assault. So I'm liking Nicholas' push here. Although, overall, considering the economic disparity, I am... Like, it, it makes sense Northside's gonna win, or Israel and Nikola are on the path to winning, because they are... They have a massive advantage, and really it's been more attrition than anything that's been kind of working against them. But now... Now they have a 4k metal army advantage, pretty much... Well, not just... The entire back line, actually. Everything sent back here is spare. That is the advantage they have. Is the, these units going around the back wiping out Anarchid and Dave the Brave's forces and wiping out their economy. That's just the army value advantage. Everything else is dead even in terms of cost. Not to mention you have the force multiplier of the Thunderbird, which... Well, you had it. You lost it. Phoenix is coming in, not able to quite do so much, I'm afraid. Not that they're terrible. There's not Thunderbird tier. Still, though, getting some damage done, softening up the knights. That'll open things up very nicely for the recluses. And with that, forces for Anarchid and Dave the Brave getting thinned out once again as they're trying to somehow defend against these forces. Two of the ogres and one of the knights have gone down, but still not enough. The rest of that army just wreaking havoc, wiping out the entire northeast side. I mean, applying quite a bit of pressure that's forcing Dave the Brave to send units back. Like, these units are not in the front line. And again, the units that Nikola is sending are their army advantage. They don't need them in the front line in order to have an even fight. Thunderbird comes around. Should be able to get... No! Not even one! That Trident! Trident saving the day. Second Thunderbird, however, does get in. The Trident was distracted. But yeah, no, the damage the Trident dealt was just enough. Thunderbird went down before it could get any shots in. Still, that wasn't quite followed up quickly enough for it to matter. Same time, though, all this force here over to the north side. All these Ronin from Dave the Brave are not going to last any appreciable amount of time. This is... Yeah, this is basically it. The north side... Just trying to find that one push. i actually honestly pretty impressed by the way that Anarchid and Dave the Brave have been holding on this entire time. Because again, they've been behind economically most of this game. Like, metal income wise, like, a quarter of the game they've been behind economically. Army value wise, they've managed to at least hold on. And not that much more effective. I think it's just... Ash not sure. Oh, I see what it is. Yeah. Northside has spent a ton reinvesting into economy before going hard for army. Which has really paid off. I mean, when they have... Actually... Okay, they're metal accessing at 114 metal per second. Yeah, that's saying a lot. Granted, a lot of that is reclaim, but still. And... Hey, it's a Dante! I haven't seen one of these in a long time. I mean, seriously, I, I haven't seen a Dante... in months. 1v1 or 2v2. People have been really switching into the use of Demi Striders like Cyclopses and such, rather than like Cyclopses, Crabs, Grizzlies, rather than going for Striders. Yeah, with that though, North Side they have all the reclaim, they have a bunch of static economy. They've been able to raid out with the army advantage they had. Thunderbird is utterly embarrassing any units that try to get around the map, so ultimately... Yeah, north side... There's not a whole lot they can lose from here. I mean, they've been a little bit skittish about assaulting. I don't think they quite realize how far ahead they are. 
I mean, again, Southside has had an attrition advantage. 8,000 metal attrition advantage. Which is pretty notable. But even then, it's just not quite enough. Not with that massive army advantage. And now the thugs go down. Now there's nothing that's going to stop them. All right, that was the entire army from Day of the Brave and Anarchist right there. The Ronin were wiped out, or nearly wiped out before. The skeleton crew of them on the top. And that is it! Anarchist and Dave the Brave throw in the towel. Israel and Nicola take it. After quite the hard fought, grueling battle, they take this fight. I mean, hard fought, grueling battle, base trade. It took 15 minutes for the map to stabilize into fronts. That's probably why the map is, why this was requested. I don't even remember who requested it, but that's likely why it was requested. It was a dynamic game on a map that tends to just collapse into fronts very quickly. So that was really well done. That was really interesting to watch. Anyway, the next game we're going to have is going to be between... What was it? For, for the record, this isn't actually a... This next one... These next two aren't requests. They're just games that follow on from some of the players who were in the Lobster Rule tournament. And we're going to be starting out with... Or moving on, rather. To a match between... Masper and Fruity. RTW Fruity. They were... I think they were in the tournament from the beginning, but I didn't really see them a whole lot later on. Anyway, we'll be on Scary Land. So, stay tuned for that. Be up in just a couple minutes.